So awesome. So I guess let's see what time it is. Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, so hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Phil Chaco. I'm a group product manager at uh, Uni um, on our core XR uh, development platform. Um, so that includes um, Air Foundation, our platform partner platform integrations, uh, Mars, um, X Interaction Toolkit, and so on. Um, so we go to the next slide. Let's see if so a clicker. Okay, awesome. Um, so what we're going to cover today? Um, pretty pretty simple short talk. We're going to kind of get into um, a bit of what we're um, we're going to introduce the Air Companion app and. Thank you. Um, what we're working on with that, and and what, when it's going to come out. So we'll, we'll start with an overview of the the overall XR creative platform. Um, where we'll go into talk, creating with the AR Companion app uh, specifically, and then we'll talk about a little bit about why it matters. Um, so build one, supply anywhere. That's one of the mantras uh, that we have at Unity, and hopefully, uh, how, how many folks use Unity here? Awesome, cool. Thank you. Um, so we have a, as you know, we have an exhaustive um, platform that lets you target all major AR and VR device platforms. Um, we also have a developer suite that we continue to build out. And we're thinking about creators that are trying to create games, uh, experiences, location-based experiences, like some of the ones that you saw early in the morning, um, and industrial experiences. Um, so uh, factory training, uh, product visualization, uh, so on and so forth. Um, so we have a set of developer-facing workflows and tools, Air Foundation, Extra Interaction Toolkit, Mars, uh, and the Air Companion, which we'll talk about uh, today, um, as well as our XR Provider Framework, um, which allows various uh, partners uh, to plug in. Um, we've got strategic partners that are listed there, uh, and we also have uh, ways to integrate with our platform. Um, uh, we have an XR SDK that allows you to um, integrate with that as well, if, you're, if you have a device uh, that you want to integrate. So uh, we believe the world is a better place with more XR creators in it, probably something you've heard from us. Um, and in XR, um, we're focusing on three things right now. Um, seamlessly creating XR content once and deploying it for many form factors. That's um, what you know and love uh, from, from Unity. Um, the second one here is um, you know, creating for the medium while in the medium. And we'll get into why that's super important uh, for this emerging space. Um, and then last, um, last but not least, uh, deploy it to every major platform. So creating for the medium uh, while in the medium. So creating apps that are experienced in the real world is, is super difficult. And so if you've tried to build AR applications uh, and get them on your phone, um, the build process it takes a long time. Creating out of context on desktop you know, dis disrupts your, your creative flow state. Um, you have to test. You have to go through this process where you build to that device, and then you have to go be on site and go and test it. Um, that's super challenging. Simulating the real world uh, itself, um, which is something that we started doing with Mars, um, is really difficult. And at times, it's impossible. Um, you've got weather conditions. You've got how your, you know, the, the sensors actually pick up, um, uh, you know, pick up the actual real world conditions that you're, that you're experiencing. You got people walking around. Um, and lastly, it's also super challenging to make to to, to generate assets uh, for AR experiences. Um, so to pow power this uh, new world of spatial digital content um, was going to require a lot of content, and currently it's super expensive to produce assets. Um, so we're going to focus on three things that the AR Companion app offers uh, today, and it's currently in beta, uh, so you can you can go and check it out. Um, the AR scene editing um, that we provide uh, um, allows you to author Mars proxies directly on device with real device data. So this is a limited version of, of um, authoring scene, scene authoring. It's kind of us starting to get our feet wet to uh, extend uh, your Unity developer workflow uh, directly onto device. So everything, everything that we're doing here, um, you know, part of part of what we do is wanting to wanting to enable creators to create anything that you would like. Um, and so the AR companion is meant to be used in a in a in a you need developer workflow. Um, so with a developer that, that you, you'll go to desktop and kind of build your, build your application uh, from there. Uh, second, environment capture. Um, so creating for AR, so if, if folks are familiar with, with creating for AR, oftentimes you want to have a simulation um, of, that ex uh, of the, the place uh, where your AR content is going to be experienced um, in, your, in your development workflow um, because 
it's hard, hard in advance. It's hard to reason about you know, these abstract targets uh, where you want your contact uh, to appear. Um, and so our environment capture features allow you to create floor plans and data recordings uh, for use in the editor. So you'll import them into the editor and use them there. Uh, and then object capture. Um, so um, we recently, this earlier this year, um, worked with, with Apple um, to uh, introduce object capture features into the AR Companion app, allowing you to capture and scan uh, 3D objects um, and generate assets for your experience. Uh, and that's going to be super uh, important broadly as well. So this is a video showing uh, the, you need, uh, the, the companion app in action, uh, and I'll kind of explain what's going on here. So Dan Miller, who's in the audience, um, helpfully demoing. Um, you know, what he's doing here is on his mobile phone, scanning the space, and we're recording point cloud data, plane data, and we're going to then bring that, we're saving that here on the phone, and then syncing that into the Unity editor. Um, and so what you're seeing there is a 3D reconstruction um, based on that simulated content. Um, you can edit your scene and then use that video and data recording playback as a simulation environment to speed up your workflow um, inside the editor. So this is a mobile to desktop um, kind of user experience to uh, improve the quality uh, and quality of your output. So AR scene editing. Um, so author contextually relevant constraints uh, for content. Um, we call them proxies um, in Mars. Um, block out scenes on mobile using prefabs loaded into the Unity Cloud. Um, so this allows you to, to preview um, the, the constraints that you've created. Um, so what that looks like, um, so here, here are a few screenshots of what that feature um, actually looks like. So um, on the device, you might have had prefabs um, that you've loaded into the Unity Cloud and you can use those to preview where those contents, uh, that content is going to exist. Here we're using planes. Uh, planes are a super stable uh, way as, uh, to um, anchor AR content. Um, you know, obviously, AR content uh, requires world understanding, uh, and so planes have been um, uh, some of the, the most solid uh, forms of world understanding that we've had for a little while. Uh, and so we started with that. Um, and how do, you, how do you anchor AR content? So here we are identifying planes, and we are setting size constraints on those planes. Um, so you have a minimum and max size uh, of a plane. So um, if you want that uh, coffee maker there to appear on, a, on an end table or something that looks like an end table, you can specify uh, your plane constraints uh, and ensure that uh, the content goes um, in an appropriate place uh, for your experience. Um, environment capture. Um, so as mentioned, create a floor plan to use as a simulation environment and then record uh, a real-world session uh, for playback in the editor. Um, so the way this looks, uh, we've got a couple features that we're highlighting here. Um, environment, um, more manual process here. So this is creating a floor plan environment. So you're, you're going to block out the corners of the room, uh, and that gives you a general uh, dimension and, and size that you can then go and use in the editor. We've got data recording. Um, this allows you to, uh, when you hit record, um, you're recording a video, and that'll, that'll capture uh, your camera path, uh, the point clouds, uh, video, and, and the various surfaces um, that your device is uh, actually um, experiencing, um, so that you can then, rather than have, having um, a rough simulation, you can actually have real world data uh, that you're playing back in the editor uh, to help you um, expand your experience. So this is something that a lot of advanced uh, creators have been doing for some time, and we're making this kind of a workflow more accessible to a lot more people um, you know, with, this, with this app experience. Um, and that's, that's what that, that looks like. You, know, you saw that in the, in the, in the video as a um, more um, you know, in, in motion, uh, as it were. But basically what you're seeing here, top, that top window is, is the, scene, uh, the, the scene view uh, that you know and love. Um, and you're seeing two new windows here down below uh, with a window here on the left side. Um, so the left-hand side, that's the Mars panel. Um, and then uh, in the bottom, you're seeing uh, two versions of our simulation view. Uh, one is um, uh, the simulation view showing the, the scene uh, overall. And another is the device view, which shows, shows you the perspective uh, of the camera. So uh, to be able to preview that, that experience. Um, object capture. So, um, object capture, um, so 
you know, Apple made a little bit of noise uh, with this earlier, uh, we, and there are various solutions um, out in the market um, to uh, scan 3D object and, and, and get that um, into your experience. So that's something that we want to support. Um, so um, Apple is, is, is first out of the gate, and so we're, we're supporting that um, uh, initially. Um, so this allows you to scan a physical object uh, directly on the app, um, generate a 3D model, uh, for now specifically on, on Mac OS, um, and then leverages, and this leverages uh, Apple's Object Capture API um, on Mac OS uh, Monterey. Um, so the process uh, for this is a little bit, um, Object Capture is a little bit more challenging, so we've got, uh, what, we're, what we're doing, the process is roughly, we're taking in um, we're capturing a bunch of photos um, around the object to kind of get a, um, uh, basically get a shell uh, of that object. Um, and uh, we want to get high quality photos. Um, unfortunately, it happens, just so happens that the AR session uh, have, happens to fight for the same resources um, as a camera session. So um, the, what we're going to be shipping with um, is a workflow that um, doesn't actually use uh, AR in the guidance process. So you can see how that this, we could have a better user experience um, if uh, you know, if we're able to actually engage uh, AR to help guide users, um, because this is fairly technical and takes some takes some practice uh, to get right. Um, so in the meantime, uh, we're using the accelerometer and the IMU. Um, so you can see in the top right, uh, we've got um, uh, green dots uh, representing where you've taken pictures uh, around uh, around that object. Um, so as you take pictures, um, as you keep taking pictures, that bar will fill up uh, and so that you'll get um, pretty good coverage um, of the experience uh, of, the, of the object. So, um, so once you have those photos, uh, you're then, gonna uh, 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 then going to import them into the Unity Editor. Uh, so um, here we are on Mac. Um, we've got, um, so, you know, got, we got this set of photos uh, that we've captured um, on device. Um, also to note, those, those photos, uh, the, the, this API doesn't actually care where the photos come from. So you can actually, so if you have an Android phone, um, this will work there as well. So if you, you can capture those um, photos uh, from Android or iOS, um, bring them here into the editor. Um, and on Mac OS, uh, we are um, talking to uh, Mac OS's um, Object Capture API uh, and processing that into, into a 3D model. Uh, and, and that's the output. Um, this one is, is a guitar. Um, you know, shown one of our engin engineering leads on the team, um, you know, one, one of his, uh, his um, instruments. Um, so why does it matter? Um, so uh, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it. And this is you know, us starting to scratch the surface. Um, so creating for the medium uh, while in the medium, um, in, this, in this new era, so in this, um, era of wearable contextual computing, um, we're going to have many, many new form factors uh, to experience content. Uh, we're going to have mobile devices, wearable devices. Um, we're going to have glasses. Uh, we're going to have watches. We're going to have IoT sensors uh, in a factory environment. Um, there, there's so many different sources um, of input. Uh, and then the d display technologies are also um, getting better. Uh, where we've got um, holographic displays. We've got um, glasses, you know, we've got uh, what we've got, you know, regular old 2D glass, um, and so in that world, we're going to want our applications to um, uh, to to be contextual to the lives that we're living and the experience that we're having, um, and allowing us that that allow us to to connect with one another in the workplace, um, at home, um, kind of out um, socially as well. Um, so. Where we're going to want to go is having being able to um, create for the medium while in the medium, uh, and this, you know this is something that we've seen you know, other other folks um, you know, in out in the industry do, and um, and and our vantage point here at Unity is to uh, is to do that in a way that doesn't limit your possibilities. So we're starting to scratch the surface of creating for the medium while in the, while in the medium, but not dumbing down the output, so to speak. So we want to make sure that you can. Create while on while on your phone. Uh, earlier we had um, editor VR um, from a few years ago, so editing directly in a VR headset, um, and have that be part um, of a workflow where you're a team. Uh, you've got your technical artists, you've got your uh, programmers, you've got um, your producer. You might have a client uh, that comes in, and, and uh, you want to 
you have a whole team that you want to have uh, collaborating and giving each of those folks um, purpose-built workflows to help them contribute to the creative process um, is going to help um, help make the team more productive uh, and help uh, create better output. Um, so, so that's why this is super important. This is scratching the surface. There's so much more that we want to do uh, with the workflows, um, but uh, you know this is um, kind of where we are, kind of based on today's technology and and uh, you know different and 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 the state of the market. Um, so yeah, lastly, um, you know, uh, this is me. Um, that's my, um, you know, you got my Twitter handle there. Uh, DMs are open if you want to reach out to me. Um, and for more information, you.com slash Mars. Uh, the campaign app uh, is out in beta uh, and will be uh, out in general release um, by uh, the end of the year. So uh, very imminent. Um, so um, leaving some time here um, for questions. Totally uh, want to have a dialogue with you all. So have this a bit be a bit interactive. I'm sure you have a lot of questions about kind of the platform and, and other things that we're doing. So I've got a microphone here, so if you want to put up your hand, I can come to you. I'm not sure that mic might be live as well. Thank you, Phil. Mm -hmm. Who has a question? Over here? Let me see. Is this on? Oh, this is on, too. We can have you come up here as well. Um, so my question is, what kind of modes does the companion app support? Is this connected? Is this real-time remote? Or is this a, um, you know, like uh, scan and then and save that and then use that at a different, later time? Yeah, um, great question. So if I understand the question, it's, it's um, what, uh, you know, what's the level of connectivity uh, in the app? So, you know, is it, you know, is it directly, yeah. Oh, okay. So remoting is a huge ask from, from developers. Um, so, kind of, we know that we see that in in these all, a lot of the new experiences, um, new developer platforms that are coming out have uh, live link capabilities, and that's something that we are working on um, because Unity is a you know, I'll be transparent Unity is an older platform, so um, we have some challenges uh, related uh, that that some of the the newer um, newer content cre creation experiences don't have related to uh, providing that remoting experience, uh, but we know it's a huge ask from developers. Um, so this particular app doesn't have that. Um, we are working on that separately. Um, uh, so there, there's progress being made, um, but uh, nothing, nothing to announce uh, just, just yet on the remoting front. Um, so where we are, kind of this is a very, right now it's a very developer focused experience. You can see that each of these modes is, um, and it's not fully connected. This is, you're doing a, a cloud sync and, and download, so it's not a, a live collaborative authoring experience yet. Um, where we want to go is, is we want to get there. And so we're, we're, we're charting a, a roadmap to uh, get there over time. So, you know, the, um, so nothing to, you know, something that we, we want to, you know, do at Unity is kind of talk about work when it's now, you know, when it's closer uh, to shipping. So there's, stuff, there's a lot, so much stuff that we're working on. We've got, um, um, folks have been talking about, uh, we, we've got some press around Project Hubble. Um, so that's our VR scene editing and design review uh, app, um, something, something to know. Um, got, Team members from uh, Unity Slices Table here uh, doing some really awesome work um, uh, with um, you know, uh, AR pass through uh, content as well. So um, a lot going on, uh, but it's going to be it's going to be a journey. So it's um, you know, as you know, uh, folks have been in the space for a long time. Um, you know, we don't make progress as fast as we want, but we're steadily chipping away at it. So um, kind of more more to come over time. Um, Want to take one more? Sure. One more. We have time for two. Yeah. Okay, or two. Yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Robin from Intuitive. Uh, so I have a question. So I'm super interested to uh, on the AR companion app. Uh, is there any potential integration of? I know there's a Unity uh, Cloud View. That is a possibility that would be a Mac running in a Unity server side mm. that would be allowing uh, rendering the point cloud or. Um, uh, the object capture API on top of uh, Unity Mac server, and then be able to pull the model into the, the whatever platform you have. That's a un any Unity game we have built, so that maybe user could gain the benefit from it. Like, is there any thinking of that sort of integration? Yeah. Okay. So, um, if I understand the question, so thanks for the question. Um, the question is related to. Um, how it, can we enable um, the, the desktop experience to also be delivered over the cloud? So we just acquired 
Um, it recently acquired Parsec, uh, which allows for streaming, uh, basically doing a, 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 a virtual desktop instance um, that, you can, that you can stream content into. Um, so that's a great question. Um, I don't know whether we have a roadmap for, so this particular API at this time requires Mac OS. Um, I don't think that, I'm not sure, um, so I, you know, I think you'd probably want to look at the Parsec product page to see if they support Mac. Um, if they do, then yes, th that workflow would work that way as well. Um, we also have uh, acquired a company called REST AR, um, and we're kind of working on uh, a roadmap for um, providing our own version of a 3D scanning and object pipeline. Um, but uh, that's uh, you know, kind of more to, more to come on that, nothing to announce uh, on that front. Um, cool. Um, one more? Cool. Last question here. Sure. Hi, I'm Adolfo. I'm from Mexico, and I have a, just a short question. Mm -hmm. uh, given this set of features, I was wondering what kind of features are only available for Microsoft HoloLens? Cool, awesome. So yeah, Microsoft HoloLens. Um, so great question. Um, so yeah, we didn't, we didn't talk a ton about AR um, headsets uh, here in this talk. Uh, but we have a really great partnership uh, with, with Microsoft. Uh, we work with them. An extra interaction toolkit um, supports um, the HoloLens. Uh, we're about to, just this week uh, in Mars 1.4, uh, releasing some, um, even better support uh, for the HoloLens. So plane finding will work on HoloLens. You'll be able to, uh, to do some simulation uh, and then uh, of, of an experience on HoloLens uh, using Mars. Um, so. A lot more coming. We've got OpenXR uh, with them as well um, to enable better integration um, at, that, at, that, at that bottom layer. Um, so really good, tight work collaboration um, with, with um, Microsoft. We're going to be giving another talk in, a, in about a month talking also about OpenXR, XRI, and MRTK and how they all worked um, together. Uh, and, and that's um, a great workflow for uh, deploying to, to HoloLens. Yeah. Um, cool. Thanks for all the Thank questions. you, Phil. Yeah. Let's give it up for Phil Chaco, Group Product Manager of XR Unity.